Hello and welcome. This is a lecture series. Please have paper and pencils ready to take notes. The better your notes are, the better you will be able to understand when you come to the assignment that covers this standard. Let's get started. Today we're going to cover the Oklahoma Standard 8.3.R.5. That's for 8th grade, the 3rd standard, reading, .5. The language of this standard is that students will evaluate textual evidence to determine whether a claim is substantiated or unsubstantiated. Please be ready to pause the video to write down the definitions that we will have here. So let's break down some definitions of the vocabulary that was used in the standard. Let's look at textual evidence first. Textual evidence is what the writer, which is going to be you, uses to prove or back up a statement in their text. So if you are writing a research paper, you are going to take evidence from other things that you have read to prove or back up a statement in your text. Let's look at the vocabulary of the word substantiated. This means provides evidence to support or prove the truth of a statement. So if you make a statement that something is true or that you believe something, you will use real substantiated evidence from text to prove that what your statement is is true. Unsubstantiated. This is lack of evidence to support or prove the truth of a statement. This is usually something along the lines of an opinion. If you say Coke is better than Pepsi, there's really no way to substantiate that claim. All kinds of studies can be done, however, that does not mean that it's true because it's an opinion. Please pause the video and write down these definitions from our standard language. So what kind of things do we want to look for if we make a claim? What kind of evidence do we want to back up what we are saying? We want to look for electronic and print sources like from the internet and we want to look from the library. We also have first primary sources such as observations, interviews, surveys, experiments, and different types of personal experience. So that leads us to talk about primary versus secondary evidence. You have primary sources which include original documents. That would be things like photographs, interviews, and so forth. A secondary source would present information that has already been processed and interpreted by somebody. A secondary source might be like a movie review from a movie critic. That's their interpretation of the movie. So it's a secondary source. You can pause the video and write this down. We will dig deeper into this subject in one of our later standards. So if you find exam examples or text that you want to use, does that mean it's substantiated? No, not always. You need to examine that evidence and make sure it's directly related to the topic that you're researching. So you have to ask if the source is reliable, but just because you found it, it doesn't mean it's true. Here's an example if you're writing a research paper. If you're reading an article in a construction magazine and they're writing an article on how to build a house in Colorado, they show you five graphs about how many fifth graders attend public schools in New York. So you read an article written from personal experience on what it's like to be a doctor in one of the largest hospitals in the United States and the article is written by a second grader. Do either one of these seem to be substantiated? No. There are articles you can find, but it doesn't relate one thing to the other. Now when we're talking about the OCCT testing for the state of Oklahoma, what they're going to do is they're going to give you passages to read. So you'll be reading probably at least two passages. Then from those passages they're going to ask you or give you a prompt and they're going to ask you a question. You have to read your prompt very carefully to find out what they're wanting from you. Then you're going to write an essay based on that question. So you're going to look for evidence in those two given passages. Then you're going to use that evidence in your essay. You're going to note where you found that, evi 
evidence by using one or more of these things below, like stating the line number or stating the author's name or stating the name of the passage. Then you're going to use that evidence to decide if it proves or disproves the prompt. So this is the OCT T testing, or this could be a testing situation in your classroom. So you'd read the passages and then read the prompt. Find evidences in the passage to either support your statement or to disprove your statement. Let's look at the standard language one more time for 8.3.R.5. Students will evaluate textual evidence to determine whether a claim is substantiated or unsubstantiated. So think of this in terms of two different applications. If you have a research paper or if you are doing some OCCT testing for the state of Oklahoma or in the classroom. You're going to evaluate the evidence that you have been given in the case of the passages on a test or you can evaluate the evidence of the text from texts that you gather for a research paper. Please use your notes and practice these skills and then take an assessment to ensure that you have mastery of this skill. Thank you very much for joining me today.